Thank you.
Good morning to everyone. Once again, folks, good morning. Folks, my name is Paul Lane Jr. I am one of the funeral directors from the Paul Lane Funeral Home. On behalf of the members of Trustee Davis's family, I do wish to thank everyone who has come out to support the family on his home going. The actual formal home going celebration will begin at 11 or shortly after. This time has been allotted for those of you who wish to share memories of Trustee Davis. Once we begin the order of service, only those persons who have been designated to speak will speak during the actual homegoing celebration. Uh, those people who are designated are Arlette, Sharon, and Dana Jenkins. So if there are other folks who are present who wish to come and share with the family members, this would be your time to approach this lectern. I'm going to ask for what I term an icebreaker. The icebreaker is that first brave person who is not afraid to come here to the lectern. What you actually do, you break the ice and you make it easier for everyone else who would like to come. So if I may have someone who will come to please share with the family, this has been the time. Please come.
My name is Janine Ramsey, and I'm a friend of the family. God bless everyone for being here this morning. I see lots of people that I've known for my whole life, and I knew Mr. Davis my whole life. I know the whole family since I was a baby. I used to live across the street, and uh, me and my sister. And the years go by, and our friends go home, but we're here left with their memories, and those are great things. And so I always remember Mr. Davis as a strong, standing upright, barrel-chested man <laughs> who didn't ever have to speak. You just knew his presence was there. He would be in the driveway in front of the garage, just hanging out, being a member of the community, watching out for the kids. And we knew that he loved us all, and we love him. I'm glad we're all here to show our love. May I have another, please? This is the opportunity that has been set aside. The family members are here, so please come forward. Good morning, everyone. Craig Sutherland, um, a um, tr former trustee at Calvary Baptist Church. Um, one of my former colleagues said, once a trustee, always a trustee. So um, my first day on the board, um, Brother Davis was in the room. And I really didn't know what to do. Well, I should say my first day of my second stint. Um, I wasn't sure how they did things. And Brother Davis said, just look. And about 15 minutes later, he sent me home. And I said, wow. That he said, no, 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 don't worry. We'll give you the rest of the day off. Um, and from that moment on, he wasn't the head of the trustee board, but you could feel that he was the leader in the room. And people looked up to him, and they listened to him, and they, they, um, what he said mattered and what he thought mattered. Um, then after working with him, we became very close. Um, he had a wonderful sense of humor. I, think, I don't think people realize how funny he actually was, but very humorous, very thoughtful, always wanted what's best for others. He was, um, if you wanted um, to be certain that someone would be on their post all the time, Brother Davis was that man. He was always here. Up until the moment when his health prevented him from being here, he was always here. And um, my, fond, my memories of him are fond, and um, he's one that many men in this room would want to emulate. I love him. I will miss him. And um, my condolences to the family. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Deborah Fields, known as Fifi. I am the niece of the family, amen. Um, I just have a short memory of um, our Uncle Donald and I'm reading from the family in Virginia. So this is to our family, it says, I remember when this started, when I met Uncle Donald back in June 8th of 1963. Yeah, I was there, I was at their wedding, <laughs> um, yeah. And um, I remember my Uncle Donald, and the three of them at that time would take many trips to Charlottesville to, to stay at my mom's house, which is known as um, Aunt Ray. Aunt Virginia would pack the suitcase with the car with plenty of suitcases and plenty of food. And the family, Davis, will um, come down to come from up north down to Charlottesville. And, you know, as a young nephew and nieces and stuff, we always used to say that um, Uncle Donald res <laughs> resembled Muhammad Ali. We always say he looked like Muhammad Ali. Um, I remember one time my mom loaded up the station wagon with seven knucklehead 
nieces and nephews, and we headed up to, to New York, and I don't know how we did it, but we made it work, and I remember one Sunday, summer, some of us went back to New York, and somehow the shower door got broken, and I remember Uncle Donald saying something to Aunt Virginia, Virginia, those doggone kids done broke the shower door, and that's the only time I remember Uncle, Uncle Donald raising his voice. But Uncle Donald loved the Virginia side of the family. When he came to Charlottesville, he liked to hang out with Eddie and Raymond and Ralph and Eva, just to name a few. He loved dancing. He loved um, playing cards. He loved the Virginia side of the family. And then later, there was um, Alad and Donald, and that kind of made their family completed. And, you know, I always remember Uncle Donald listening to jazz and in the quietness of his basement. And, you know, to us, Uncle, John, Uncle Donald was a gentle giant and to all the people that he met he always had a kind word we will miss uncle donald and um especially from the family on the virginia side from charlottesville virginia way down south uncle donald we will miss you we love you from your niece and from your family i'm known as fifi May I please have another? Good morning, everyone. My name is Needy Oliver. I'm the um, acting chair of the trustee board here at Calvary Baptist Church. And I've known Donald Davis since I got on the board in about 1998. He's always been there for us, but not only the church family, but also for, also for the trustee family. Always a gentleman, always kind, always well spoken, and he always had wonderful things to say about his family, going to visit his family or whatever. Um, I will certainly miss him, and I will miss his kindness. Um, when he became ill, each Sunday I would give him a call. I would try to call him after church just to see how he's doing. And we would talk. And he just told me how he looked forward to the calls, speaking to me. And we would just talk about any little thing, uh, football, whatever was on the TV, his grandchildren. He was just a lovely, lovely man. And I will certainly miss him. Um, may he rest in peace. And. I hope to have many more like Donald serving on the trustee board. Thank you. Do I have another? Okay, folks, the microphone will remain here. If there are others who do desire to come forward, um, you may do so. At about five minutes to 11, I will return to give instructions regarding the beginning of the homegoing celebration. Thank you. Um, please continue with the music. Thank you.
Folks, we are now going to make preparations for the beginning of the homegoing celebration. I am going to ask a favor. Anyone who does happen to have a cell phone, we're going to ask you to please place your cell phones on vibrate. Once we begin the order of service, we would prefer not to have the interruptions of cell phones. I do thank everyone for their cooperation. The beginning of the homegoing celebration is known as a processional. What that means, family members, we will enter the sanctuary following Pastor Hall. For the processional, I would also like the deacons the deaconesses and the trustees to please um, assemble in the rear. Um, trustee Davis was a trustee here, so as an officer of this church, deacons, deaconesses, and trustees, please also make your way to the rear. Family members, at this time, please rise. We're going to ask you to please line up in the vestibule of the church. Thank you.
Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. is in the law of the Lord. In his law doth he meditate both day and night. shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water which brings forth his fruit His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Godly or not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth. For the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. No sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. my shepherd I shall not want Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He 
leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning to the Calvary family. And good morning to the Davis family. We have come to celebrate the life and the home going of our dear brother, trustee Donald Davis. Our program will proceed as printed. Is Minister Deborah Fields present? Yes. Deacon Ray Smith. Okay. All right. Our congregational selection this morning is Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour of Prayer. We ask the members of the family to please remain seated. Everyone else will stand. And all of us, those seated and standing, We'll sing our congregational hymn.
found we leave and all escape the be reading Psalms 23 from the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. May this be a blessing to the family. I will be reading the New Testament, John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If they were not so, I would not have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. And if, you, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that whether I am, ye may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man ex comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord add a blessing to the already reached word. Let us pray. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. For all I have desired, thy hands have been my provider. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, unto me. Eternal and everlasting, Lord, we come before you, Lord, this day. We come to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for life, health, and strength. We come to thank you, Heavenly Father, for our families and our friends. We thank you for the Davis family this day. Lord, we present him to you, Heavenly Father. Lord, you have, he has been a good friend and a hard worker in this church. Heavenly Father, we ask that your grace would abound with the family, Heavenly Father. We ask that you would touch them individually and collectively. Look down upon his children and grandchildren, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we ask that your strength would be with his wife, Virginia. We ask that you would touch her this day going forward, Heavenly Father. Strengthen her in the time of her needs, Heavenly Father. Give her the ability to continue to trust in you, Heavenly Father. We praise you and thank you for what you have done, for what you are going to do, and for what you are doing right now. Lord, we thank you for our friend Davis, Heavenly Father. He has been a friend to me and many others, Heavenly Father. We ask that he will be with you right now in, your, in his presence. Lord, continue to strengthen the family, the grandchildren, Heavenly Father. We lift each and every one of them up to you. Lord, we ask that his son, Donald Davis Jr., will be the bearer on his family, Heavenly Father. Give him strength that he will continue to uplift each and every one of them, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name, we pray this day. Amen. Amen. Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am Precious Lord, lead me on. Mm -hmm. When my way goes with precious Lord, linger near. When my life is all almost gone. Oh, hear my cry, hear my cry. 
sing again. Let me see. Are you on this program again? Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, great is thy faithful. Oh, my God. Y'all pulling out all the big numbers today. Bless your heart. Amen. Now, Brother Alvin, I know you did that. Kim didn't do that. You did that. No, 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 no. You did that. I know you. Alvin likes everything upbeat. That song is supposed to be sung slowly. So next time, Kim, you veto Alvin. And tell him Rhea wants the song sung slowly. That's how that song should be sung. You got it all gospeled up and jazzed up. And it takes the power out of the song. All right, uh, Sister Celeste Morgan Glenn, on behalf of our church clerk, Sister Sylvia Moon Poole, who, due to um, her convalescence, is not able to be with us today. She will acknowledge uh, letters that the family has received, and she will uh, read the two resolutions on behalf of the trustees. Um, of which Brother Davis was such a big part for so long, and, uh, and the resolution on behalf of the church. Those of you who are sharing on the front row, you may be excused. Thank you so much. You did a beautiful job. And we're going to ask Arlette, Sharon, and Dana Jenkins Crind if you will come forward at this time. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead, 
that's how that song is sung. You see what I'm saying? Uh, slow it down, Albert. Amen. You just want to boppity bop everything. Amen. Come on now, you do your boppity bop. Come on. Amen. Bless you, baby. Um, from the Mount Airy Baptist Church in Faber, Virginia, um, the officials and members of the Mount Airy Baptist Church family sent their condolences. The uh, sanctuary at Kingdom Square in Upper Barboro, Maryland, also send their condolences. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15, New International Version. To the family of Donald Davis, first vice chairperson of Calvary Baptist Church trustee board, Pastor Hall, the trustee board and the Calvary Baptist Church family extend our heartfelt sympathy and condolences in the passing of our beloved and faithful member and officer, trustee Donald Davis. First Vice Chair Donald Davis served on the Calvary Baptist Church trustee board for over 30 years, during which time he saw many changes in the trustee board membership. But trustee Davis never wavered in his service. He faithfully attended meetings, participated in all events related to the work of the trustee board, and was dutiful in performing all his assigned tasks. During his 30 years, he may not have agreed with everything, but trustee Davis voiced his opinions in the most genteel Southern manner. He served God, his church, and his fellow trustees with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, all fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Trustee Davis was a gentleman in every regard. He's the first to open a door for someone, pull out a chair, provide donuts for the trustees, and was always first in financial support and events within the church. He was generous to all. He loved Calvary Baptist Church and remained a faithful trustee until his illness. <laughs> to the family, please know that you are in the thoughts and prayers of past and present trustee board members, and we hope you will find comfort in also knowing that Pastor Hall and the entire Calvary Church family are praying for you. As stated in James chapter 5, verse 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. So we pray that God grant you his divine blessings, comfort, and strength during this time of bereavement and grief. We commend you to God, who promised that he will neither leave nor forsake you. May your sorrow be eased, knowing that he is resting in the master's hands. Therefore, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution will be filed in the church's record and a copy presented to the family of Trustee Donald Davis. Submitted on this day, May 20th, 2023, by Media Oliver, Acting Chairperson, Trustee Board, Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend Victor T. Hall, Pastor. Resolution for Trustee Donald Davis. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, New Living Translation. We, the pastor, officers, and members of the Calvary family have suffered a great loss in the homegoing of our dear brother, Trustee Donald Davis. Trustee Davis joined Calvary Baptist Church in 1984. During his 39 years of membership, he was a dedicated member of the trustee board and the male chorus. He was always willing to give the best that he had to help in any way he could. Though he is gone, he has left a lasting impression in the hearts of his friends and Christian family. Be it resolved that we thank God for the long life and labors of trustee Donald Davis and for the service he rendered to God and Calvary Baptist Church. Be it further resolved that we extend our deepest sympathy and support to the family and remind them that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. May God grant you his divine blessings, comfort, and strength during your bereavement. We take comfort in knowing that this separation is only temporary because we will meet him again at the throne of God. This resolution will be given to the family and a copy will be placed in the permanent records of Calvary Baptist Church. Submitted in love this 20th day of May, year of our Lord, 2023. 
Calvary Baptist Church, Reverend Victor T. Hall, Sr., Pastor Sylvia M. Pooh, Church Clerk. Hello? Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Arlette Davis, and I was my father's favorite child. Um, Sharon and Donald may not have been aware of this until today. Uh, to many, he was known as Donald Davis, Don, Trustee Davis, Mr. Davis, Uncle Donald, Uncle D, or Papa. But to Sharon, Donald, and myself, he was simply dad. My dad was one of the coolest dads around with his fly suits and hats to match, jazz music, and his infamous toothpick. I'm going to miss our drives to Costco with him telling me how to drive and that I was taking a long way to the Snake Road, and while in Costco, him talking to any and everyone. I remember back in the days, my dad would knock on my bedroom door early Sunday morning asking if I wanted to go to church with him. I would quickly reply, Dad, I just got in from the club a few hours ago. <laughs> His response would always be, you don't want to go to church with Daddy today? Oh, okay. And close the door. In my head, I'm like, nope, not doing it. Then I say, all right, Dad, give me a few minutes. I get dressed and I'll go with him. After service, he would sweeten the day by taking me out to breakfast. Our dad was also Mr. Friendly. I used to be so embarrassed being out with him because he would talk to everyone. The waiter, the cashier, the customer standing in line, the mailman, UPS driver, you name it. And I'm not talking about a simple hi. I'm talking about full-blown conversations. I'm going to miss that. As I was thinking about what to say about our dad, I realized that he was my superhero. To me, he was the blueprint of what a black man should be as a husband, father, mentor, and friend. The last two years have been tough to watch my self-sufficient, independent dad turn to us being, to be independent on us, to be dependent on us. I went from being not only a middle child, but also being part of the caretaker team to my superman. I am grateful to have had Mr. Donald Davis as my father. I am confident that on May 10th, 2023, my daddy was walking up straight, talking strong and clear with his fly suit and matching hat, toothpick in his mouth with his jazz tune as his theme music walking through the pearly grates. gates. Amen. Good morning. My name is um, Sharon Davis, the oldest, and I thought I was the favorite. <laughs> I read this saying a couple of days ago. It's not how long you lived, but how well you lived is the main thing. My father truly lived a good life, and believe me, he had no regrets. It has taken me some time this week to get my thoughts together on what I wanted to say today. When I would think of one memory and something else would come apart, come to me, I'd end up scratching it out and then jotting down something else. Writing something again, then jotting it out. All of these thoughts kept coming across my mind. And one thing that I said out of that was, I saw a father that was active, who had an active part in my life, from the time I was small and into my adulthood. A father that was devoted to his children, a father showing us love and devotion for his wife of 59 years, a father showing us how to treat a woman, a father showing us how to be a good friend, showing us the need to work hard, but also to have fun, and showed us getting your education was important. 
and many more life lessons. Even with dad being diagnosed with Parkinson's years ago, he showed us that you may keep, that you need to keep pushing on and don't let go. Enjoy life. I would like to think after that diagnosis that he moved more intentional. Even when his steps and stride became a little slower and his voice became a little lower, he was still dropping those life nuggets to the family. My dad was a God-fearing man and knew the Lord. He was a protector and a provider for his family. He loved being a grandfather and loved those grandkids. The grandkids could never do anything wrong. He was so happy that he had finally joined the grandfather club and was going to be called Pop Pop. I looked up to my dad. He was sometimes... I looked up to my dad. He was someone to admire, someone to be proud of. And these became more evident as I grew older and looked back into the experience that my dad and I shared. And it's funny sometimes that he did, so it's funny sometimes that he did things and I did things that now um, we do alike. He set the bar. A few cherished moments with my dad as I was growing up, he took the time and the patience showing me how to ride a bike when I was younger, as well as my sister. My, my brother, he just, he taught himself. He just got on the bike himself. He took my sister, brother, and I to see our first Broadway show. I went to see The Wiz. He took my sister and brother to see Serafina. Those days when he c would go into the basement and get into his zone of blasting, his all, blasting all kind of music, especially jazz, and hearing it outside, playing, and eventually, and I ended up eventually loving jazz as I got older. And, got, and he was quite impressed when I bought my first jazz CD, and it was David, Sam, Sam, David Sanborn. He was my protector. When I was out late one night in the city, and I had to call home, no cell phone, pay phone, and my car tires were slashed, all two tires were slashed, I had to call my dad. He came to get me and my friend at 3 a.m. in the morning. He made a trek to pick up the furniture in Cleveland and to deliver it to me in Maryland for my new home. I'm gonna miss our small chats and football and basketball chats. And I can't forget when my Giants won the Super Bowl, my dad called me. I still actually have that message. That was long ago, but I still have it. And I love seeing my dad with his routine preparation for church, getting ready for church the night before. It was a serious routine that he, that he did. My dad was a great communicator and a good friend. And this was evident by all his friends, coworkers, and even, even family members he kept in touch with. I always called my dad Mr. Friendly because there would be times when he came over, when friends came over to visit, he would join in the conversation. And the topic of music came, you're gonna see his record collection. Once my dad met you, you might as well say you were part of the family. And he always wanted to know how you were doing. I'm sure he's smiling right now and looking at all the people that he used to inquire about that are here today to celebrate his life. He got excited and was very proud with any milestones and accomplishments his children did and probably boasted at times because that's what dads do. My dad set great examples for us regarding loving your family and I'm sure for some of his friends and families provided some wisdom and encouragement. I could go on and on but just wanted to share a few moments. I spent with my dad. I will always cherish those moments and will miss him dearly. I also wanted to take, say a good thank you to my sister and brother for being there for dad. So dad, as you have earned your wings, you can now stand tall, have a strong voice back, and walk with a good stride, and know that you were a good servant, a faithful servant.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Dana Jenkins Crand, and I just wanted to say the one thing I'll miss about Mr. Davis. Can you hear me? Oh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> um, the favorite thing I have about Mr. Davis is that every time I came to the house, he said, hey, Dana, what's going on? I'm like, hey. And I will always miss that. I mean, I would see him three years have go, could go by, and it was just like yesterday. Hey, Dana, what's going on? Hey, how are you? <laughs> how you doing, Mr. Davis? But the family asked me to share this poem with you all for everyone who's dealing with loss at this time. When tomorrow starts without me. When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. But God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. So tomorrow starts without me. Don't think we're far apart, for every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Trusty William Bryant. <laughs> oh, we gonna be in the mic. <laughs> yes, we are. On the morning of May 10th, 2023. Oh, we gonna get the, oh yeah, we gonna hold it. <laughs> hmm. The Lord called Donald Davis home. He was born on June 16th, 1936 in Quinton, Georgia, to the late Maurice Davis Johnson, the late and the late Wilson Davis. At an early age, Donald loved to attend Sunday school, church with his grandmother, Clara Sheffield and became a member of Beulah ba Missionary Baptist Church in Quitman. He stayed in Quitman with his grandmother when he, his mother decided to move to Cleveland, Ohio for a better opportunity. Donald was the eldest of three brothers and four sisters. He graduated from Brooks High School where he played on the football team and and afterwards went to Savannah State College where he played on the Boston football team. He was active in the intramural sports and sang in the men's glee club. Yearning for the big city, following his father, Donald moved to Brooklyn, New York after his sophomore year in college. In New York, he had he secured a position with the United States Post Office where he worked for three years. While living in New York, he met his bride-to-be, Virginia Wells, at Tennessee State University Alumni Dance, where they inseparably, until his passing, they were inseparable <laughs> until his passing. They were married on June 8, 1963. Virginia urged Donald to go back to college and finish his degree. He thought about it and decided that he would go back to Savannah State Uni College as his wife had suggested and complete his degree. He left his bride in New York and went back to Savannah, Georgia, where he returned, and he returned to New York and he had his had his BS degree in physical education and, new, and a new baby girl named Sharon. <laughs> After receiving his degree, Donald became the head of the New York City property, property program for 
the community and serve, uh, serve the public school 138 in Brooklyn and worked for a little over a year. From there, he began working as a McBerry Branch YMCA as assistant physical director where he served for several years. His next job at Huntington High School in Huntington, New York, where his first position was attendance coordinator. During that time, his second daughter, Arlette, Okay. Okay. He was born in the following year. Son Donald was born. After the birth of his son, he went back to college to obtain his master's degree and, graduate, and graduated from Adelphi University in Garden City, New York with an MSW in social work. His degree allowed him to embark on a new career at Huntington High School as social worker where he worked for over 20 years until his retirement. Donald enjoyed his free time and especially during the summers where, when school was out, he would do extra activities with his family, travel to visit family in Cleveland, Ohio, visit his homeboys that he grew up with in Georgia, and take a few cruises. He went to Aruba with friends, and, and his favorite places were Las Vegas with his wife especially when he retired. He was skillful on the grill and loved to barbecue and always boasted that he had made the best spare ribs with his special sauce. <laughs> Donald took pride in his lawn, keeping it fertilized, watered, and so green he, he did not like for his children to, and their friends to play on it. He grew a garden in his backyard with a variety of vegetables. He also had other jobs that he loved to do, which included interior painting that he had, that he did not, that he not up did only for his home, but also for friends and family. He helped the next door neighbor, Charles Hannon, uh, with his carpentry business. He worked for a luxury car service. He was also a coach for his son's Cambria Heights Little League baseball team. The odd job that would be a surprise, he was a good humor ice cream man for a few summers. He loved to stay in shape and would get up early in the morning and a walk, walk a few miles before beginning his day. An active music enthusiast, Don loved jazz, blues, and gospel. He also acquired a great collection of CDs that, cher that he cherished and played when he was able to and loved to attend concerts. He also loved attending Broadway shows with his wife. Donald loved his family and was a great provider. His wife and children, grandchildren meant everything to him. And he played an active role in their lives. Education was a special, especially important to him and his wife, and they made sure that all of his children went to college and were debt free upon finishing. Amen. He was also proud when his son attended his and graduated from his alma mater, Savannah University. Donald was an active alumni of Savannah University. He also was a member of Calvary Baptist Church, New York, where he sang in the men's choir 
and later became a trustee. Donna was preceded in death in by his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson Davis, brother Walter, Bruce Johnson, sisters Patricia James, Clara Bootsy Ricks. Don leaves his wife, Virginia, for over 59 years for, to cherish his wonderful memories. Two daughters, Sharon from Upper Marlboro and Arlette Davis of Cambria Heights. And Donald of Cambria Heights. And three grandchildren, Jana Davis, twins, Andrea and Kiara Davis, two sisters, Earlene Hall of Clayton, North Carolina, and Maureen Teague of Upper Marlboro, and one brother, Michael Johnson of Cleveland, Ohio. Two brothers-in-laws, Leland Hall of Dayton Flor Beach, Florida, and Raymond James of Cleveland, Ohio. And two sister-in-laws, Annie Dickerson of Philadelphia, PA, and Agnes Ray Coltrane of Charlotte, Virginia, as well as a host of nieces and nephews and relatives and friends. And I thank you having patience with me and God bless you all <laughs> look how I want to take it over <laughs> great Thine faithfulness, O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not. Passions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter, springtime. And harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above join with all nature in manifold witness to thy. Mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord,
so much, Sister Kim. Thank you. The congregation would not even believe how many hours we practiced that song. And you probably would not believe. You thought you were hearing her, but actually you were hearing me. It was, <laughs> somebody say, help him, Lord. <laughs> yes, it was the best, best instance of ventriloquism you've ever heard. Where would, where would you be without me, Kim? But wow, thank you, baby. Thank you, Brother Alvin. Amen, for not messing the song up. You know, Brother Alvin, he'll want to, great is that faithful. You know, he done juiced it all up. Amen. Thank you, both of y'all. Amen. All of you who participated in the program today, you did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Everybody but you, trustee. I don't know what you were reading. I really don't. I was like, wow, I'm pretty sure this said and made the best spaghetti with his special sauce. How you came out with spare ribs, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, does spaghetti look like spare ribs? And then I got to thinking, you know, that would be a marvelous combination. Spaghetti and spare ribs. And then something about you saying spare ribs. I'm like, man, I'm hungry. I want some spare ribs. This is amazing. That you pull spare ribs out of spaghetti. I was like, wow. Amazing. Wow. Now, Don, we all know that you were his favorite. Not Sharon and not Arlette. How do I know this? He told me. Mm. <laughs> well, you can't refute it. No, he loved all. He loved this family. So, Miss Virginia, I was sitting here thinking almost 60 years, just a few months shy of 60 years, if in 1963 God made a deal with you, said you can have him, 
but you got to give him up after 59 years. In 63, you would have taken that deal and run with it. So today, our hearts are heavy. We're sad. We're going to miss him. But God gave so much, and all you can do is say what, what Job said. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be your name. All you can do is bless God today. 59 years with this good man. And he was a good man. He was a sweet man. Now you can't see what I can see because I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. But I see something that is very strange. I want to ask every man in the house to please stand up. <laughs> Brother Donald, I want you to turn around and take a look. You may be seated. We do a whole lot of funerals in the church, but I, I can't remember. I think it may be that the men outnumber the women today. And I see so many men, and I say, wow, why? Because of the respect that you had for this man. He was a man. He was gentle. He was sweet. He was kind. But he was a man's man. And all three of these kids, grands, just be thankful. Just, it hurts. And it ain't going to stop hurting today, I can tell you that. But whenever you're tempted to miss him, and you will be more than you know, just say, Thank you for this husband of 59 years and this daddy. Sharon, I don't know how old you are. <laughs> but thank you. Thank God for this father that you had. On the first Sunday of this month, I went to Long Island Jewish Hospital and I gave communion to Trustee Davis. And when I went into the room, he seemed very low. He was. He said a lot, but his voice was so faint I couldn't make out anything. I just nodded my head. Something said, you might better get the permission to give this communion. So I went back to the desk and I asked the lady, could I have permission to give him communion? She said, well, I'll have to call my supervisor. To get I was like, baby, it ain't all that. I ain't got time for all of that. I tell you what, I'll just put it to his lips. I won't have him eat the wafer or drink the cup. I'll just put it to his lips. Sure enough, I put the wafer to his lips. I put the cup to his lips. And I went to take the cup away, and he reached up with his hands. When I heard of his passing, I was very thankful, Deacon Murray, Dr. Murray, that he got communion before he took his transition. God bless him. We're going to miss him. He was, he was wonderful in every way. I don't know anybody in Calvary, Calvary Church can say any negative thing at all about Donald Davis. Until his health declined, he, he was... Mr. Johnny on the spot, faithful, here every Sunday, did his job, was kind and wonderful to everybody. 
What a man we've had in our midst. Trustees, we were blessed to have him. Which I got a bone to pick with the trustees. You see, I'm not in a hurry. If you got somewhere to go, you just tip on out. I'll get there in a minute. But you know, in the resolution, I picked up a little phrase. He may not have agreed with everything. I don't know why, but I took that as throwing shade at the pastor. <laughs> what, what is that? See, you got to watch Negroes because they try to, they sneak in little stuff, you know. And they think I'm not going to hear what they got as well. I'm listening to what they say. And I wrote it down. He may not have agreed well, with what was there to disagree. When you got the most wonderful pastor in the world, there's nothing to do but just agree and go on in unity and love. What did he not agree with? Media, who wrote this? Media wrote that. I knew media wrote it. I knew it. Oh, with you. Why didn't you say that? Because I know when they heard it, they was like, hmm, he and the pastor didn't get along. Uh-huh. Well, bless you. Now, last thing, and then I'm going to get to the text. Hey, you. You're right. You used to come to church with your daddy. Why did you stop? I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. In front of all these people, I don't care if you stay at the club to 6 a.m. If you if you bad enough to stay at the club, and you're too old to be clubbing anyway at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I know some people, they still think they're clubbing, you know. But listen to me. I don't care if you stay at the club to 6 a.m., I want to see you Sunday morning taking your daddy's place. No, 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 no. Do you go to work every day? Do you try to go to work or you go to work? You go to work. Okay. I'm finished with that. I want you to take his place and be as faithful as he was in his memory. I think he would be so happy to know that and you're going to be blessed amen God bless you all of this family God bless you brother Don you know we love you sister Virginia God bless you God bless you I don't want to be long I just want to lift up one little passage of scripture in the book of Job I know you ain't been to a funeral in a long time. And you're like, every time I go to church, they preach from the book of Job. I very seldom preach for the book, from the book of Job for that reason. But well, there's a lot of powerful stuff in Job. And I, I want to read this little passage. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. King James Version, Joe says, I will wait for my change to come. Here is our text, verse 15 of this 14th chapter. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature. Your hands have made. You will call. And I will answer you. You will long for the creature. Your hands have made. Deacon Ogan Mola, so good to see you, man. Bless you. We looked for you when we were in Nigeria, but we understood you couldn't be there. God bless you.
and uh, indeed to all the trustees and deacons who are present today. Thank you so much for your presence and members of Calvary who are here, ushers and nurses. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Alvin and Kim. Uh, multimedia, thank you so much. Amen. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature. Your hands have made. And so we come to the funeral and we're looking out at the funeral as the only way we can look at a funeral out of these eyes. You're looking at it from your point of view. And I'm not going to be but two or three minutes. My brother right here. Yeah, you. Right behind you, Craig. What's his name? My brother, right here behind you, Craig. Yeah, you. What's your name? Just when I get three minutes, just raise that. That's I need you to do that for me. Amen. I'm not going to be with three minutes. Listen up. You're looking at this out of your point of view. And you're looking at how sad it is we lost Brother Davis. We're looking at it. My husband is gone. My daddy is gone. Granddaddy is gone. But have you ever thought to try to see it from God's point of view? God say, I, I want this man. I made him. He's mine. I let you borrow him. For 59 years, Virginia, I let you borrow him. And, and, and he was a good loan, wasn't he? Sharon, Arlette, Don, I let you borrow him. And he was a good daddy, wasn't he? You thought he was yours, but he wasn't yours. He's mine. Lord have mercy. That's all I want to say. I want to tell you, you belong to God. You came from God, and one day you must return to God. Everything else is on loan. Don, I read in the book that you got some twins. Well, guess what? They're not yours. They're his. He, he lets you borrow them. He lets you watch over them. You don't own them. They belong to the Father. He let you be the steward of them. Because they belong to God. And every child belongs to God. And every one of you, brothers and sisters, you belong to God. You can say, well, I don't go to church. I don't believe in God. That's all right. Because God believes in you. And one day you are his creature and you will return to stand before him. I saw Brother Davis the other day. Uh, I, I don't even know that it was a whisper. I couldn't, I couldn't make out what he was saying. He was so frail and weak. He was trying to communicate, but I, I, I couldn't make it out. And I thank God. I said, you know what, Don? You fought a good fight. You finished your course. You kept the faith. You've been a husband. You've been a father. Lord have mercy and a grandfather like no other. You know what, Don? <laughs> I want you to. I want you to come on up here and be with me. You're too good for all of the suffering and the pain. That old body has broken down. I loaned you. Now I'm calling in my loan. And saints, all we can do is say thank you. Thank you. No, you're not some result of some big bang. 
some slime on some rock that evolved into who you are. No, you were made by his fingers and by his hands. He created you. He made you, and he knows all about you. And one day, he will long for the creature his hands have made. Make sure you're ready. Job says, you will call and I will answer. <laughs> you better believe you're going to answer. You can't tell him next week, Lord, next year, I still got this to do, still got, no. When he calls, you answer. He is creator. We are creature. And you just loaned us to this world for a little while. Do all the good you can do. Because one day, like Brother Don, you're going to answer that call. We don't know when, we don't know where, but you're going to answer that call. You know, brothers, I don't know, I got some brothers in here. How many of you brothers are single? <laughs> Amen. Don, you the only single man up in the house. <laughs> you notice when I say, how many of y'all are single? The women start looking. Oh, how many brothers in the house single? I see somebody ain't telling the truth in their life. You know what? <laughs> y'all ain't no good. That's all right. I don't even have to go like that. Let me just ask in general, have you, do you have caller ID on? That's the most wonderful invention ever known to man or woman. Caller ID. You got caller ID on your phone? I love it. Because when somebody calls me and I was like, ooh, I don't want to talk to him. And single men know what I'm talking about. Because you know you out with your girl and you grooving, but the other girl calls you right in the middle of the date. And your girl say, who is that, baby? Oh, some salesman, you know. Yeah. Well, guess what? There's no call ID on his phone. He calls, you answer. Are you ready for that call? Huh? Brother Davis, 86 years. God bless you. We can carry nothing away. Man that is born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. He cometh up as a shadow and never continueth in one stay. I know that my Redeemer liveth and at the last day he shall stand upon the earth. And I shall see him for myself. And not another the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, said Jesus. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He who lives and believes in me shall never die. Inasmuch as it has pleased the almighty God in his wise providence, take from the walks of this world our 
dearly departed brother, Trustee Donald Davis. Therefore, it becomes our sad duty to commit his mortal remains to the ground of which they were made earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And our most glorious privilege as the sons and daughters of liberty to commend his spirit to our creator, redeemer, and sustainer looking forward to the general resurrection when the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and those who are alive and remain shall be caught in the air to meet him. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. And now unto him who is able to keep Donald Davis from falling and present him faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. And now, brothers and sisters, may all of us together pray the prayer the Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All rise. Bless you. Bless you, baby. This your baby, huh?